Hey Sam, my name is Jason Lawrence. This is a metal match, for those of you that have never seen one. I carry it with me virtually everywhere I go. One is a symbol of the work that I'm doing now. Another as a symbol of what can be started when a group of like-minded, committed individuals get together, like the first six of this organization, your first meeting, six participants, and now look at this room. It's really exciting to me to see how many people are actively involved. How that ties together within this organization here, a couple of veterans were on a hike with the Cottonwood Institute, the founder of Ford Church. They asked him a question, do you ever provide survival courses? He was a boss instructor. For those of you that don't know, Boss Boulder Outdoor Survival School is one of the world premier in terms of teaching civilian survival skills. So do you provide this for military members, particularly kids? And he said, no, but we will. Invited me along because I asked him, I've heard a bit about your organization. I've been following you for a couple of years. Is there something I can do to help? He said, yes, you can pilot the Operation Military Kids course. See if we should do it again. There is so much success in that, they want to do three more this year. We're doing two at the end of March. And we had at least two parents come up and say, can you do this for families and adults? Okay, why not? So what I'm here to share with you all is a bit about what Cottonwood has done in the past, what I've been a part of with them, and then invite your feedback regarding how any one of these organizations can mesh more closely together and knit more closely together to ultimately serve our veterans. So let me talk a little bit more about specific activities. What motivated me to get up at, well really I was up at 3.30, checking road conditions, but what motivated me to leave the house at 7.30, driving a blizzard, was a post that I saw through a social networking site from one of the guys that I worked on a trail crew last summer describing an article about the disconnect between our civil families and our military families. His emphasis was, can we begin to bring that together? Seeing this on Facebook immediately inspired an awareness and an affirmation dealing with really tough stuff still as a country and as a fighting force. How can we play our collective part in that? The toughest role in the military, the spouses were acknowledged first here. So what does Cottonwood do? Connect people with the outdoors, connect them with the environment. This is the mission of the Cottonwood Institute itself, to collaborate with schools, community organizations, connect students, and now, more frequently, adults with the outdoors raise awareness of local issues, and inspire people to take action in their communities. This is the program that I piloted last summer. We had approximately eight youngsters come out and join us. This is a picture of one of our instructors, Darren, instructing a young girl on how to do a bow drill fire. These three young ladies, the two on the left, came from an Air Force family. The young lady on the bottom there came from an Army family, and everyone ultimately came together to build shelters. And this particular trip, we had the rare treat of venison. Why was it unique? This kind of activity is important because it can be a diversion from the stressors of a long deployment. In some cases, kids won't see their parents for as much as two years. It's common ground between the youngster and the parents. Survival skills and time spent outdoors are ties that can bind the parent and child back together again when they can say, hey, mom or dad, look at what I experienced, or better still, you want to go do this together. So then the adult's field experience directly relates to the experience that they share with their young person in a healthy and facilitated way. And then finally, it's an opportunity for young people to connect with others that may be in their community that they didn't know were dealing with similar issues. By request, we're launching one pilot program of families we had a young man, little John here on the left, he's 10 years old, was probably the most highly motivated of the Operation Military kids. The intent was to open the program for teenagers. When he came along, we couldn't possibly say no to his enthusiasm. He's probably watched every episode of Survivor Man, Man vs. Wild, Man <laughs> Woman Wild, and then could tell me what mistakes they had made. <laughs> His dad, thank goodness, came along with him. His dad is an active serving army member and made the time in his schedule. Generally what we try to do, especially with the next two programs we're offering in March, Grand Junction, and then again in Colorado Springs, 
is to provide a program on the weekend, and that allows the maximum opportunity for parents to get involved if they want to, because this is what I love to see personally. Big John, the dad, acknowledged that it gave him an opportunity to perhaps corral little John's enthusiasm so that we could focus on being instructors, and then the two of them could share the experience together such that when they go home and the next time they go camping, they have a All conditions, the last instructor training for Cottonwood took place outside Brainerd Lake in the snow, snowstorm prior to this one. So if it's a matter of people wanting to learn how to be more effective in the backcountry with their family, uh, building snow shelters, or simply being safer, Cottonwood also provides, for strictly adults, one to two day custom courses, depending on what people want to emphasize. And from personal experience, the level of excellence that comes from the number, number of these instructors is, is pretty remarkable. Many of them tra have trained personally with folks like Tom Brown, who is probably the premier instructor, survival instructor out on the East Coast, and many of them also live these skills on a daily basis. When I was working in Utah, the only way we started a fire was with a boat drill. Some other community programs that I'll move through rather quickly. If you see something that's of interest, Please feel free to ask a question or come up to me after this presentation and I'll share more with you about it. My intent is to focus on the military side. So here is one example of activity in school. The Earth Ta Task Force is generally located in Boulder in coordination with a, a local high school. This particular activity is connecting uh, young people with their heritage, primarily Hispanic but not exclusively. Uh, Cesar Chavez in the organic farm in the community outside of Boulder. So they learn both the organic farming aspect and then um, leadership skills. Three Trees in a River involved some rafting activity, building simple shelters, seeing what it takes to identify and maintain a pure water source. For those of you that have ever been in a survival situation, you got about two days to make sure that you get a clean source of water. And as we do the things we do, we're making those fewer and farther between the U.S. This is a wolf refuge. They often go and visit take young people. Some other partners and activities, we offer survival clinics at places like REI. And then our next event, April 30th, is a base camp bash, something of a fundraiser. There's information online. Probably the two or three most important ones I want to emphasize with you all, the Grand Junction trip, the end of March, and then the Car to Springs trip at the end of March, two days. This is free to military families, free to the youngsters. We generally ask for $25 up front to secure the slot, and then that'll be refunded. The reason we ask for the money up front is we found that when you simply offer something for free, a lot of times people will turn away from it, and then we have an empty slot that we could have filled with someone else. So it's a bit of a, yeah, I really want to do this. I'll show up, and if I don't, I forfeit my 25 bucks. That's it for my presentation here. If you have any questions, I think we've got a couple of minutes. How many did you have participate last year in the program? The, um, over the summer, do you have some of the programs that are happening in the winter? Specifically, I didn't know what it said. We will offer more if there's an interest. Okay. The reason we're offering these in the spring already is because because of the success in November. They said this was great, we want to do it again. Okay, we'll do two more, and then we're offering a family program in the summer specifically. When people step forward and say, hey, we want to do this, we can scramble to get the funding, or you say, we can fund it for you, or in other cases, we already got one scheduled, jump onto this one. What's the capacity for the trips? Generally about 12 participants, and ideally, parent combinations, or even primary caregiver, it wouldn't have to be strictly mom or dad. To make it clear, these folks were sleeping in tents. They had the opportunity if they wanted to, challenge by choice is what I call it, to sleep in their shelter. None of them did. <laughs> we also ate pretty well. They have the opportunity to eat bugs, tree bark, things like that. <laughs> but it's not a chuck you out in the woods and hope you make it for two days. The intent is for it to be fun and challenge people's edges. 
And if they learn something fascinating about shelter building or fire starting, then cool.